Welcome to Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, if you want to learn how to change wood from this to this, ooh la la, keep on watching. Let's get started. Now, I actually picked up this slab at Live Edge Hardwoods in Duval, Washington. This is an amazing large slab yard that has wood from all over the world. So I will leave a link in the description box below on where to actually contact them. And if you're in the Duval, Washington area, please do yourself a favor and check them out because they are incredible and they will be definitely utilized on future projects to come. Now most of the slabs that they have on site are actually pre-sanded, but this one was not, which is why it was donated to BYO Tools, which inevitably always is nice and much appreciated. But inevitably, I always enjoy showing you the full process from start to finish between a very rough looking piece of wood to the eventual beauty of what it can actually become. But first off, we need to level this. Now this piece is nowhere near flat, which is why we shimmed up the corners and we are utilizing my router sled that I created in BYOT number 46, which was the Epoxy River Shelf. And I'll be leaving a link in the description box below on where to actually find that video if you so desire. Now on this router, I am using a flat cleaning one inch router bit, which will just level up the entire surface of the board. I slowly but surely remove one layer at a time just to make sure I have properly level surface. And once I have a properly level surface on that top, I then move to the bottom. Now in all honesty and full disclosure, this is not the quickest process, but it's not the longest either. This probably took me about 20 minutes or so to completely flatten both sides of the board, which is not that long considering the fact that you get a perfectly flat board with just a simple $20 router sled and a router. Now, as you can see, there's a couple large voids on both sides of the board, and inevitably, I'm going to be filling these with epoxy. But prior to filling them, I have to cover up the bottom holes first to make sure that when I do pour the epoxy, that none of it spills out afterwards. I also prep all the voids with some hot glue to make sure that when I do pour, it doesn't get everywhere. If you ever worked with epoxy before, you will know that it can be potentially quite messy to work with, but if you do a lot of nice productive prep work first, you can avoid a lot of overruns. Now for this project, we are going to be utilizing Total Boat Epoxy Resin. Now this epoxy resin is not only for boats, yes you might think that, but no, it's for much, much more. Now this is a two to one ratio product and I always generally use a scale just to make sure that I have proper mix ratios because it just makes life a little bit easier and a little bit more precise. So I want to add a little bit of flavor to the mix so we are actually incorporating black diamond pigments to this epoxy resin. Now this is a beautiful dark stormy pigment that they create but they have an assortment of all different types of products especially pigments so if you want to check them out please do so. They are quite affordable especially with their variety packs that I picked up at Amazon and I will be leaving a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase them. Now there's one main large void in the top of this board and I want to be diligent about pouring enough solution in there so it encapsulates and fills up the void below. I generally fill it up to the brim and then work my way back to it as the resin level lowers. And I occasionally lift the board up just to make sure there's no seepage below because that would just get messy. Now to grind off all the excess, I'm using my 4 inch grinder with an 80 grit sanding disc. Now this is a great way to take off excess material very quickly, but you have to make sure and be careful about not digging into the wood itself because you don't want to gouge or make deep swirl marks that are going to be very difficult to take out with a sander later. So I'm putting very little pressure on the grinder throughout this process. By doing so, you can save a lot of time and energy with the sanding process, and we can always appreciate that because sanding takes long enough. I go and remove the tape from the backside, and as you can see, it held on very well, but it was quite close to seeping out. So again, just be careful of making sure there's enough pressure and enough adhesion to hold. 
Now I am eventually making this into some type of charcuterie board or serving tray and the issue that I'm having with it is that one side is very easy to grasp but the other side is not so I'm be digging finger holds into the bottom of the tray. By using my drill and a Bosch rotary rasp I'm able to dig in perfect little finger holds quite quickly and easily. This just adds some stability and a bit more grip strength and who doesn't love grip strength right? After that, I proceed to grabbing my orbital sander and start sanding away. As I noted before, that grinding disc was 80 grit sandpaper, so I am now going from 100 grit all the way up to 220. And just like with any good woodworking project, the sanding portion is key. So taking your time and due diligence with the sanding process going from grit to grit is very important and vital to any good woodworking project. As I proceed to finishing off the sides of the board, I take my grinding wheel and just grind off some of the very rough edges of the board itself. Now, I still want to incorporate that live edge feel on the sides of the board, which is why I'm using the sanding disc to really mold and shape the sides of the board that are a bit rough and need to be fixed up a bit. Just keep that in mind for future endeavors, of course. Now this 5 inch orbital sander really does a great job with getting around all these rough corners and edges but just know at a certain point you will have to brace the board and then use some hand sanding down to a grit that you truly want and a finish that you truly appreciate. Now these finger holes that I carved into the board are a bit difficult to sand smooth so I actually applied some sandpaper to the rotary rasp and used that to sand it smooth. To give the board a nice final finishing touch, I grab my router with a half inch round over bit and round it over all the top edges. You don't need to do this to the bottom. Now you don't have to use a router for this, you can just use some sandpaper and good old grit strength, but inevitably the router does make quick work of making a perfect groove surface on all of the edges. After that, go ahead and grab your random orbital sander and just sand down that lip on all the top edges and then go ahead and pin it down and do a bit of hand sanding just to give that final beautiful feel and touch. Now our amazing new sponsor for this video is going to be Gearheart Industries, which make amazing brands, whether they're torch brands, electric brands, even drill press brands. They make them all. They can be utilized for leather work, food safe, and of course woodworking for my own purposes. They send me over a torch brand as well as an electric brand, which will both be featured on upcoming videos. And just by holding these brands, you can truly feel the quality because the weight is there because the emblems are solid brass. You can get aluminum, but for harder materials, they obviously recommend using a harder metal, which is of course brass. Now as for general usage of the electric brand, all you have to do is plug it in, let it heat up. Once it's ready to go, you can go ahead and utilize it on many different products and it will stay hot for a considerable amount of time. So just keep that in mind and make sure you set it on a surface that will not burn. That's obviously preferable. Now that we're done with the sanding portion of this project, we are now time for prep. We're going to be incorporating some mineral spirits onto the wood just to clean off any dirt and debris as well as any miscellaneous sand particles that are still left. Of course, having a clean surface to work off of prior to finishing is very vital, especially if you want a nice smooth finish. So I highly recommend cleaning your wood prior to finishing. You know, just a general rule to live by. After the board is dry, I generally suggest going over the entire surface with a sanding pad just to knock down any of the loose wood particles that stuck up after you dampened the wood with mineral spirits. And then finally after that, I take a tack cloth and go over the entire surface just to make sure I have every single little particle that I could possibly grab. And of course comes time for my favorite portion of any woodworking project is the finishing portion. And for the finishing, we're going to be using an oil and wax by Walrus Oil. Yes, Walrus Oil, which is a product that I've used a number of times now and it's 100% food safe because there's only four ingredients. There's coconut oil, mineral spirits, beeswax, and of course vitamin E. 
You apply a liberal amount to both sides of the board, and I actually apply two layers of the oil first, and then after it soaks in, I wipe it down with a clean cloth, and then apply the wax. The nice thing about Walrus Oil is that both products can be used separately or together. They both have the same exact ingredients and they both do generally the same thing, but if you want a bit more of extra protection, I generally finish my boards with both products because I want the highest durability possible. I've always received an amazing wood finish while incorporating walrus oil onto my wood projects, and the fact that it protects the wood, it's food safe, and it's a local company, I can consider it a win-win-win. Win. -win -win. Now this was a fun project and I always love a good before and after and as you can see from the very beginning of what this board used to look like to what it is now, it is truly an impressive before and after and you just gotta look back and say my oh my that is one beautiful sexy beast of a serving tray or charcuterie board or whatever you want to call it. I just know it's damn beautiful. Look at that restoration project. That is another amazing project from start to finish, and especially with what it used to look like, quite the vast improvement. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. As a quick side note, I wanted to say a special thank you to Gearheart Industries. Yes, Gearheart Industries. They make amazing brands such as this. I'll be using these a lot more in my upcoming videos, so if you need brands for woodworking and so forth, Check them out. I'll leave a link in the description box below on where to actually purchase one. In any case, thank you for your time. Please like the video. Please subscribe to this channel. And please check out my Instagram feed and my newly developed website at byotools.me. You can learn how to support the channel from there. In any case, thank you for your time and see you next time. And stay. Nope, nope. Come back here. Stay. No, no. Get over here. Stay. Yes. No, no. This is worse than time my dog Kona to stay.